Related to the prime. Right. To the first interval. And, and if you think about that with regards to our legs, which is, you know, the other parallel to this, mm -hmm. right? We're on our hips. Yeah. So spatially, where if I were just to inhabit my hips, I, I could only really just kind of shuffle around if I'm trying to inhabit and, and, and move from my hips alone. You see what yes. I'm saying? Yes. It would just yes. be a sort of this, this kind of shifting kind of movement. Yeah. And hence, Rudolf Steiner gives us a four principle for the, for the prime or the first interval. Mm -hmm. That's just a very small curve. And, and if you're a eurythmist, you would, if you were trying to show the audience that they're hearing that you're now in the prime or you're in the home tone mm -hmm. or the key that, that, you know, the key signature mm -hmm. that a piece of music is written in, you would be, you would be you're moving really slow because you're inhabiting your hips and you make this little, little scallop form, mm -hmm. he shows. Mm -hmm. And then he shows the next form, which is a little bigger. Uh -huh. It's a bigger scallop. Mm -hmm. And then he talks about, in the tone of the rhythmic lectures, how it has to do with this bone. Okay. And then you'll see the eurythmist, if you've ever seen a eurythmic performance, then you'll, you'll see they, they, they do this. Mm -hmm. And what, what they're doing is they're bringing that bone into movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All this is just sort of just hanging there. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to get you as, as, as a eurythmic performer to see this bone. Yeah. And so they're showing you that bone yeah. by, by bringing it into movement. And so when you yeah. have like a series of, of, of seconds, you know, you know, mm -hmm. da, 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 they're going, you know, da, 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 and they're showing you this bone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because really, what can I mean, you, you see the hand, but it's but they're, really, they're really trying to show you this bone, this bone. movement. Yeah, yeah. And then hence, hence formative yeah. wise, they're inhabiting this bone. Yes. You see, so then they have a little more mobility. Yeah. And so. In other words, the consciousness of that particular bone has to be there when you do the second. You can do that. There's yeah. lots of ways you can you can show this. Yeah. But I'm bringing it all together, so he gets a bigger scallop because if you were to inhabit these bones, you mm -hmm. see, now I can actually. You know, I can, I can actually get somewhere. Yeah. And he's showing this yeah. bigger, this bigger scallop. Yeah. Yeah. And the arrhythmist is, is, is showing. What could be more objective than showing your bones? Yeah. Yeah. You see. So, and then he says the third interval has to do with these two bones. Uh huh. And you see, there's two of them, and, and he, uh, Rudolf Steiner describes these as the major and minor third. Yes. And this is how we we build chords mm -hmm. using a major and minor third. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, what does he do? He makes a bigger scallop. Because, mm -hmm. you know, and then, then you'll see the, the arrhythmists in the performance, they're, they're doing this. Yeah. And they're not really inhabiting their hands, it's just kind of there. But you see, they're bringing these bones into movement. Yeah. It's different than this, but lifting. Yeah. So it's kind of a lifting gesture. Yeah. And this is this, because this, now you can, you see, now I'm in these. And you see, now I'm in, you in can, these. Bones. You can also do it in the, in the legs. And I have more mobility. Yeah. And so, hence, Rudolf Steiner shows we have a larger form. Yeah. Yeah. And then Rudolf Steiner goes, okay, so now we have the fourth interval. And then something really interesting happens here. In, in musical theory, they call this the first tetrachord, mm -hmm. which is the first four mm -hmm. uh, tones in any scale. And in, for, you know, in Western musical theory, we use the, the C scale as, as the middle, as our, like, mm -hmm. as our cultural right. scale, as humanity, as humans. Anyway, so there's this... He calls that the first tetrachord. And now you see, if you look into the skeleton, mm -hmm. you get into this area where all these um, carpals are, these small right. bones. Right. There's a whole bunch of them. Bunch of eight of them that are right in here. Mm -hmm. And four and four. Four and four. So here you go. So then the off center gives the indication. Mm -hmm. What does he give the indication for? He says that you squeeze your hand together. Uh huh. You see, and the only because way because you can do that with those bones. You, it's the only way you can bring those bones yeah. into movement is to squeeze your hand together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you'll see in the eurythmic performance, the eurythmist will, will squeeze their hand together because they're they're showing you what you're hearing. Yeah. If there is a, a fourth interval, or there's a there's a, either in a harmonic or a melodic interval, they're showing you, they're help, aiding you in your in your observation of the art. Of, of your rhythm, that you're hearing a fourth interval, so they squeeze yes. it together, yeah. and which also means that you you are now inhabiting your heel bone. Yeah. You see, so now you see that you're inhabiting this part of your of your body mm -hmm. where all these bones are here. Yeah. Which is a parallel to your hand. Let me see them. From below, and do turn them around. Yeah, you see, that's amazing. Yeah, and it's it's, just... it's a parallel. There we go. Okay, so. 
you squeeze them. So you, that they're, they're showing you, that's how, how I'm showing you that we're, this is what you're hearing. And then also in how they're moving, you know, they're, they're showing you that I have more mobility. I'm now standing on the earth in a sense. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not getting up on, my, on the balls of my feet yet. No, no, that's, that part isn't activated yet. Not yet. So then Rudolf Steiner talks about um, the next interval, which is the fifth. And he gives this really kind of beautiful looking, like a 50s hairdo or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or a 60s hairdo, like a Twiggy hairdo, I don't know. You know it's it also the node. It's an, yeah, it's this, and so, and he gives the indication to the arrhythmist that if you wanted to show the fifth interval, then you, you hold your hands together and you create this sort of bell shape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see this sort of open mm -hmm. shape. Because really what's happening is that you're showing these bones. Right. The which are, which are, are naturally, you see, inside my Be skin. Before the fingers. And if I were to open my fingers up and wave them around, I would be misleading them to hear the other intervals. Exactly. So that's, that's why you keep your fingers closed. Closed. See, this is the logic behind what Rudolf yeah. Steiner brought. Yeah. Well, what's been happening in, in, the, in the tone rhythm lectures, since Rudolf Steiner uh, starts to um, talk about the soul connection and what, what, what the, 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 the natural feeling we have when we hear these intervals, he talks about the fifth as like we're living right on, on the outside of ourselves a little, right on the, mm -hmm. on the edge of our skin and kind of, you see, and then... Yeah, we're a little bit past our comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're no longer held like the fourth. Yeah. We're starting to come, come out of our body and our soul. Yeah. You see? And then he, he, he goes on the lectures and he doesn't refer back to the bones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and neither do the arrhythmists in, in, their, in the training. Mm -hmm. they, just, they just, they don't follow it out. No. But if you follow it out, you'll see what he was talking about. And so, of course, you know, when, when you inhabit the next set of bones, mm -hmm. you, you know, these ones here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you have more mobility. Yes. You see, you're able to now get on the balls of your feet, you mm -hmm. see, and that's how you can get, you can travel so, so much across so, space. So, yeah, so, so show us that. Because you're, cause you're, you're, you know, you, you bring that, you know, and it doesn't really matter if you, you, you know, you can do that form if you want, but yeah. it's just that you're getting from A to B in, in a more quicker, agile way because you yeah. know it's happening in your bones. Yeah. This is just, in a sense, a sort of a schematic picture that, that the interval is larger, so the space is larger because that's what's happening spatially too on the piano. Yeah. You know, if you push, push the, you know, the C, C to the G, G yeah. it's, it's a bigger space. Yeah, and yeah. The, and the, the soul also feels it has that. Has to widen. Yes. You know, twinkle, twinkle. Mm-hmm, yeah. As opposed to, oh, Christmas tree, yeah. and fourth. Yeah. It's hell. Yeah, yeah. Until here you're starting the next tetrachord. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's mm -hmm. this, there's a really important place here, which we'll get to again when we talk about Frank's reversal, but right. also, uh, there's something else going on here. Mm -hmm. But I want to finish this out because most rhythmists don't really understand this part of, of the lecture cycle because mm -hmm. the training centers uh, aren't taking rhythm in an applied way. Well, you imitate and, and you, you, you just do it They're and they don't know what you've done. Yeah, yeah. They don't see that you're actually just trying to show your bones. Exactly, yeah. It's as simple as that. Most yeah. of the stuff that's really wise and, 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 and sage it is the most simplest things. Because that's why they feel they don't have to talk about it because it's so simple, but they don't maybe realize themselves. Well, if you, yeah, they probably don't. So, yeah. so you get to the next set of bones and you're out here. Mm -hmm. That's the six. Mm -hmm. And so you're in these bones here, right? They yeah. show. Yeah. And the Rudolf Standard says, gives the indication that you open your fingers up. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And that, so if you wanted to show the audience, you know, that, that what they're hearing is six interval, you open your fingers up. Mm -hmm. And then you have more form. And then he gives the form. Um, he gives this form. Uh -huh. You see where it, it you know, you can even so do the little cur curly cue here, but yeah. it, it literally it caves in on itself. In so other words, you have to cross yourself. You have to cross over the path that you came back. So there's more consciousness. Well, you're actually getting further out, you see what yes. I'm saying? Yeah. And the, the fact that you cross over that path is another, another element that he talks about in another lecture cycle. But the fact is, is that, you see, you're now inhabiting these bones down here. Mm -hmm. You see, so it gives you more mobility. It gives you a larger form. And so now you're going way out, you see, and you, you rush over to here, you know, and, and you get back before you hear the, 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 this, this mm -hmm. span of, of the difference between two tones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really important, like, you know, my body lies over the ocean. You know, that, that even the, 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 the fact that that's a sixth interval, 
And even the way it's written like that, that longing mm-hmm. for somebody yes. laying across the ocean, yes. you see, yes. it's, it's already saying there's a lot. So, the so if us. you had it the, in, in a second, it wouldn't do anything. No, no it wouldn't be true <laughs> to, the, to the text of my fawny lies over ocean. Mm-hmm. There we go. So then, in the seventh, it even gets more, you know, you know you're, you're down into here. Uh-huh. To this bone, and you're down into this bone. Wait a little, I just want to see them properly. So, so in other words, before you ever go to the... Well, the, the, well you have to just realize one thing, is that the thumb and, 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 and the big toe... So these bones you're talking yes, about. Yes, those toes, those. Yeah. You have to disregard the, the, the thumb and the big toe because mm-hmm. there's another principle that's going on there which has to do with our future, and it's, you know, mm-hmm. this isn't, isn't uh, totally gestalted yet. Mm-hmm. It's, it's held back. Yeah. Our thumb is, is, is something yeah. that makes us very different, and it's also our big toe from other species. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because supposed thumb. Yeah, yeah. So there's another thing going on here, but you know, you just follow the bones out, and you're now down into here. Mm-hmm. Well, if you were, uh, if you were, you know, Hussein Bolt, who's the fastest man in the world, you mm-hmm. see, in order for him to sprint like he does, he has to get on the on the, at the very end of his. Of his, you know, his time yes, yes. to get there. Yeah. You've seen here. In order to get here to here, you've got yeah. to go fast. Yeah, yeah. Because the space is bigger. Yeah. And you know, uh, and, you know, those who know music theory, you know that that sound of, of the seventh interval is very uneasy. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, da, 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 <laughs> yeah, You start to da, shake. Da. It went, it's going towards the octave. But it's not oh, there yet. Oh. It's not there yet, and, it, and it's it, and and what does he say? Rudolf Steiner says, "You shake your hands." Mm-hmm. Well, it's totally. You see, at, at this point, there's no other expressive medium other than shaking your hands. Now you have to do something, yeah. And, and actually, shaking your hands is yeah. totally in line with the mood of the mood of the seventh. Yeah, yeah. You, you've run out of uh, of of, um, of of movements that, so to speak, are going to express that. Yeah. And because you're way down here, and then he talks about the octave, and and then he gives us this. What's been done in the past, in, or traditionally, is there's just a circular form, and you just, and you just, you know, you just circle and you just chill out because when you hear the octave, it's this feeling of completion. Yeah, yeah, and and you can relax a little. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But what's interesting is that then. You know, you're at the very tip of your fingers, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting about the octave, there's a duality in the octave because now it's the prime of the next scale. Exactly. And if you look at your fingertips, there's a duality here. Right. You've got bone underneath there and you've got nail on the end. Yeah, that's right. So you have the du- duality, what can follow from that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. See, well, they're not teaching this in your rhythmic schools. No, no, I've never heard of that. No, either. of course not. Because mm-hmm. they, they, they read these lectures. Yes. Uh, like a cookbook, kind yeah. of like, you know what I'm saying? And then you, know you don't take it to the next point. Yeah, you don't do it, you don't look at it in, in, a, in a scientific applied way, which is really important. Okay, so that's important to know already, just as, as a eurythmist who's maybe listening to this, or an anthroposophist who's listening yes, to this, yes. who has an, an idea of, of this relationship, of, of, this, of this dynamic, the yeah. human skeleton. Yeah. So I've been teaching it this way from the very beginning, because when I taught in Sacramento, I had to ask these questions of like, why, you know, why is it that we do this and that and the next thing? Yeah, you, you want to know. You have to know. And that's why I say that, you know, what could be more objective than showing your bones? Exactly. But what's, what's kind of happening is that, you know, there's a tendency more to show our, our muscles. Well, it, it, like the first three up there. We don't get to the earth part. No. I mean, the the bones are the earth part, of course, but that's also where the blood is made inside. So you have that... There's a duality again. Again. There's this sort of hard, dead bones, but in the middle Middle is 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 alive and well. The new life, yeah. The new life. Yeah. So here's what I found out about Frank Chester's work. So Frank has done all this research on the human heart. Heart, Mm mm-hmm. And he's Mm -hmm. found out that in the heart, there is this thing called a reversal that happens. Mm Mm-hmm. Where, where the stream turns all in on itself and goes the other direction. Well, I'm going to show you now with the skeleton where the reversal is that Frank's talking about. Okay. And you'll have a better idea. Mm-hmm. So we can look at this bone. This one you know, points out a threefoldness that Rudolf Steiner talks about. 
And again, now we're going into a threefold archetype. So we're going to be talking about thinking, feeling, and willing, okay? okay. Mm-hmm. Or past, present, and future. Okay. Manas, buddhi, atman. Mm-hmm. You know, however you want to put it, there is this relationship, you know, head, heart, heart and hips. hips. Mm-hmm. There's, that's a threefoldness. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk threefold now for a while. Okay. <laughs> Why not? So, so just so we're not mixing up this fourfold paradigm, which often happens, and people start mixing these paradigms up mm-hmm. and they get lost. Mm-hmm. So this is the head of that, this bone, just mm-hmm. this bone. Mm-hmm. This is the rhythmic system reaching right. out right. like a plant does until it gets right. to the next node. Mm-hmm. And then it, you see it splays out and it wants to be more limb-like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can see it coming yeah, out. Yes, splayed out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see, and, and in a sense, that's in our whole organism. See, the ancient Greeks talked about, they even had, uh, well, they talked about you know, our head, mm-hmm. our middle system, mm-hmm. and, our, and our, our limb system. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you can see our head is just one wholeness. Round. And then down here, we got 10 toes. Yeah. See, it's, it's, our whole organism is a threefold organism, just yes. like this one bone is. Like you have in the head, you have the forehead. Just like in your... You have the breathing the, the part, the and then system, you have the will, the will. In, the jo- in the jaw. Exactly. So this, yeah. is, this is holistic thinking. Yeah. This yeah. is holism. Yeah. This is applied you have to keep, at work. Keep the three together. Yeah, we'll work with the archetypes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What's been happening in anthroposophy, and um, all I can do is like liken it to uh, uh, how, how do I say this? I liken it to a lot of oftentimes how people uh, create dance performances. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, dancers train and they learn techniques from different people and they learn cool, you know, uh, athletic moves from this person and they know that move and they know this other move from this other person and then they, they created their own kind of moves and then what they do, they take these moves and they kind of rearrange them and they shuffle them around in order to uh, figure out, you know, how they flow into each other. Mm-hmm. And then they, then they trouble themselves on picking a piece of music they like and then they start to see how they can make this flow. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's very intuitive and it's very artistic and it's, and it's incredible and you know, it's really high art to be able to do that. That's just one way. Another way is to actually listen to the music yeah. to be start, start with and see, yeah. well, what, what, what is it? Is it written in a major or minor mode? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what key is it in? Because mm-hmm. you're all you know, laws of the sonic world. Yeah, yeah. And then, you, and then you start to inhabit these bones and do these moves that Rudolf Steiner had said and then you see you now are, are creating a new art yeah. At yeah. A, through science. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's different than rearranging things. Yeah. Which also works, okay, and it's very intuitive mm-hmm. and important also, but it's all it's just it's one way. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what, what anthroposophists kinda of do with anthroposophy in a way. They take quotes from Steiner and they rearrange them to their yeah. liking. Yeah. But they're yeah. not getting the they're not understanding the holism that's behind it and using mm-hmm. holism as a tool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what I found with uh, Except for the fact when we get to the other side the way Steiner talks about it. Thinking and we, feeling and willing are going to go their own way, and we better find out now how to take them apart, yes, but put them back together again, the way you say. Right, exactly. That, that t- taking things, breaking things down, and putting them back, back together, together is a holistic picture. Yeah. And, and then you see that's what's happening in education. Mm-hmm. Uh, just on a side note here with Waldorf education or any mm-hmm. kind of education, mm-hmm. what you're doing with the child, the child comes to the world with a sense of wholeness. Yes. Okay, and Steiner says you want to teach your children from the whole to the parts. Yes. So, because what we're doing is we're taking their life and we're breaking it up into grammar, mm-hmm. history, math. Mm-hmm. You see, we're breaking it all apart for them. Mm-hmm. And but then once they start to wake up in their in their lower creative centers and into their in their in their sexual centers, yeah, we have to start bringing it back together for them. Yeah. And we have to start bringing teaching them out of a holistic men- mentality. Yeah. And and, and a, you know how to recycle. You know, what, what is the life cycle of, of an object that we create? We have to be able to start thinking in the future of things, like the seventh generation consciousness that the Native American Indians used. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. thought, it, and we're losing that capacity to think into the future. Exactly. Well, yeah, I we're think we're spending that, all the time shuffling. I think that is the, that is the problem of the intellect. So, you That's know, the problem that of you, the have, intellect. you have sent, sentient, like sense uh, impression, and then you have intellect, yep. and then you have consciousness. So, you know, you have to kind of work with all three. You got to work in with all way. three, yeah. and and what's happening in our time is that people.